Alrighty, what morning everybody and cast time once again. And um before I continue on, I'm gonna intro the music here. This is gonna be Asakura Nada to leave the body. I actually wanted to play this uh for yesterday's cast, but I completely forgot about it. So so go ahead and play it here. But it's some uh, rather creepy piano music. Um, and also there's gonna be a there's a there's gonna be a few moving parts in this one so like always just to get it out there there might be a few mistakes here and there so okay but otherwise a good chunk of my night was uh, spent playing gems of war um, they have a they have a weekly mini game. I got a weekly mini game called Faction Assault. Uh, it's just the closest equivalent I can think of would be the the end game content on Diablo Three. Oh God, man, it's pretty damn embarrassing. I played the crap out of that game and I can't remember the name of them. They're pretty damn bad. Yeah, I I have to actually go look at. It. Yeah, pretty damn bad. Played the shit out of this game back in the day, and I don't remember what the name name of the content was. Nephilim Rifts. Yeah, that's what it was called. Yeah, um, the, but that's the closest the closest thing I can think of where you'll do a you'll do a run in a certain dungeon, and you'll get a various uh, buffs and debuffs and whatnot. Well, Faction Assault kind of works that same way. You know, you gotta... You gotta run a You gotta do a run, and you have to contend with various uh, debuffs along... Or, various buffs and debuffs along the way. So, uh, but this is only a... It's only a once a week thing. And on top of this, I actually, uh... I ran... I could actually run with a team that I'm currently playing, that I'm currently liking. So, that was one of the reasons why I... While I was playing this all throughout the evening and the night, I didn't get done until probably around, probably around 1 a.m. So, no, no, 12:30 a.m. Yeah, time's a little off. But like, like I said, I was actually able to run into a. I was actually able to do these with a group that I actually liked. A lot of times, these faction assault, these faction assaults. They have these fairly strict draconian requirements, or they only require a certain, or you can only go in with a certain team composition. It seems English is my second language right now. I'm fighting to keep myself from speaking gibberish. But anyway, yeah. But a lot of these faction assaults, they were they um, they have these pretty stringent uh, team requirements. Most of it requires uh stuff that I want nothing to do with, or. You know, you got to go in with certain builds that I don't care for. So. But, but yeah, but this time around, I could actually go in with my group. So I did that for a while, but even, you know, you know, even, even then, once the, um, once my signals ran out, they're the, um, they kind of work like bus tokens, I guess. You know, you want to play, you got to pay. Um, but even if I, even if I had any of these, uh, these sigils, even if I had these, any of these sigils left over, I probably still, I probably would have still cut it off at some point because it just got to a point where the monsters were just so big and powerful, battles were just going so long that it just, I would have ended up crying uncle at some point, so... But yeah, just... Did a lot of that, and then after, after I um, after I cut off of that, I just went ahead and watched some more of Planet Earth season one. Um, I'm still, I think I'm still in the uh, I'm still in the Great Plains episode. 
just um I'm at, I'm aware of I'm where a bunch of lions managed to take down take down a young elephant like in the middle of the night. So it's just kind of it's kind of tripping out on some of the technology they're using. I mean, season one came out in like 2005, 2006, like the mid 2000s, and I, even back then, I get looked like they had drones. They had drone technology. I, I never knew that. I thought uh, drones were like a like a fairly recent invention, like like from from the 2010s on up until today. So I didn't think they existed back then. So. And I could kind of, I could kind of tell, I could kind of tell if they're, by, I could tell it's like, it's drone tech, it's drones they're using, it just by how smoothly, just by how smoothly the, the camera flies over the landscape and stuff. I mean, usually in a, usually in, a, in planes and stuff like that, there's like turbulence and you can, planes like, you know, pitching up and down and stuff like that, but these ones here just, whoosh, it's like they're practically gliding. So. But yeah, um, but uh, on, on, there was a one thing that did happen when watching this is uh, they really skirted the line. They started talking about oh, what was it? I can't remember what animal it was, but it was just. But if the habitat continues to be destroyed, this species of animal will become extinct. And I, they kind of they kind of got on the board, almost crossed the line on there. It's I've said this in um, other casts too. It's one of those things that can really ruin a nature show for me. Environmental PSAs. You know when they all of a sudden start talking about mankind, climate change, and you know and environmental destruction in a nature show. That, that kills it for me. I end up shutting off the nature show immediately, and if it's on YouTube, I'll end up disliking the video. I mean, I, you know, it, I mean, I agree with it. I mean, the planet is facing a major crisis right now. We got major issues, but I don't want, I don't want that shit in a nature show, though. You know. But like I said, um, David Attenborough, I think that's his name. The, I think he's also the creator. And the narrator of the show, but yeah, he was kind of a, uh, he almost crossed the line on that one. It, like, like I said, it, you know, keep the environmental PSAs out of nature shows. It's a huge turnoff. You know, I mean, and I already, and that's that's the thing too. I already hear it enough, you know, outside of nature shows, you know, in real life and stuff, you know, you know, Bill Maher and. Oh, what was another one? You know, Inconvenient Truth, uh, both that and the sequel. Merchants of Doubt was another one. And to a lesser extent, the Joe Rogan podcast, even though I haven't watched any, probably ever since he moved into his new office, for lack of a better word. I haven't watched, I think I watched maybe the one with The Undertaker, but even then, not for very long. It just, it wasn't Joe Rogan anymore. Uh, but anyway, um, something else I've been watching too, and I've actually uh, talked about this guy, and uh, some of my uh, some of my other casts, my earlier casts, especially a guy named Do Not Eat. He was a he's a city planner, or he's a yeah, he was a city planner. He's a civil engineer, and apparently he's also a game designer too. I didn't know that. So kind of. I pretty much explain why he's so damn good at making videos. He's he was also one of the guys that he was also one of the guys that inspired me to start adding like images, videos, gifs, and whatnot to my own to my own cast videos. Added you know adding extra images to my streams because looking at his it his the the quality of his videos it actually looks doable like something that I could do. If I had the time and inclination, but like I said, he'd he'd be a good template. It isn't like uh, most other videos, like the high quality panda fighting games videos, um, Emperor Lemon, another one that comes to mind, Nerd City. 
Um, myth and what else? Um, I guess Watch Mojo would be another one. But you know, like the real super popular YouTube channels, the super sophisticated uh, videos and stuff like that. And I, I you know, I have no interest in doing those kind. But if I, you know, but if I was to ever make a, a full fledged video, I'd probably follow the scale model of uh, Do Not Eats because, like I said, he's they're they're not that sophisticated, but they're they're pretty watchable though. But anyway, um, probably one episode I watched of his, definitely a classic, was where uh, he was criticizing Elon Musk's loop, his uh, loop system, like it was like an underground car transit system. But it just, he basically detailed all the faults and stuff. It is, oh, but I, you know, another, and I said this in uh, my earlier cast too, it's, it's pretty much what happens when, uh, when rich people when they basically have a, when they have an infinite money cheat, you know, price is no object. You know, they have all the money in the world. They, they come up with stupid shit like this. You know, they're just crazy, outlandish stuff without thinking things through. You know, and if any, and if um, and if uh, any problems do come up, they'll just solve, they'll just solve it by throwing money at it. I mean, you know, it, it, if this makes any sense at all, if people that people that have people that have abundant resources, to me, aren't that creative. To me, you know, it, oh, God, I, it's kind of music's kind of music is kind of the same way with me. Um, you know, people that use. Auto tune and Pro Tools and like, you know, complex digital recording techniques and whatnot. To me, they're not, they're not very creative. You know, it's like, it's probably one of the reasons why a classic rock, you know, Zeppelin, Hendrix, Pink Floyd, you know, their music stands the test of time. Is, you know, to me, stuff like that is more creative because they didn't have shit for, they didn't have shit for technology. Not like, you know, not like we can't for today. I mean. You know, even the even the mood, even the music that you're hearing right now, you would think it was be the piano is being played in a basement, but I think this uh, music came out sometime this year. So, you know, I'm pretty sure this is probably digitally made in a Pro Tools Auto Tune, you know, recording studio. So, I, you know, it, it's artificial and fake. Now, if this kind of music was made, like, way back in the day, I mean, that, that show was probably creative as hell. You know, I mean, they're, they're doing more with less. So, it's like they, it's like they're, you know, the first to come up with this kind of music. You know, again, I mean, it's, but, like I said, I'm sorry if I'm not making any sense on this. You know, but I mean, Elon Musk is the same way. I mean, it's easy to, you know, when you have all the money in the world, you can sit there and make all these, you know, outlandish, you know, nonsensical plans and ideas. Why not? Because if, if they don't work, oh well, we'll just, we'll just hire somebody to fix it. You know, give them a king's ransom, put them to work. You know, but it's like, you know, it's like the, uh, I, I wish I had some examples. Like some city planning examples. Um, another book. Uh, another book I've read. Strong towns. They're talking about the same thing. It's like the. Um, it's like some of the some of the coolest cities they built back then were cool as hell because of their the restrictive resources that they have. They didn't have much to work with, so it just it forced it forced them to innovate. Necess you know, necessity is the mother of invention. I think that's the phrase also. Can You know, it, you know, when you don't have shit to work with, you really get innovative at those times. You know, so. And whoops. Oh, 
Okay. Um, but anyway, um, that's gonna do it for me, everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good. I pretty much said all the things that I wanted to say this morning, so. So, that'll do her. Um, but thanks, otherwise, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And this will be my last cast for the week. Uh, my work week has started up, so. So you won't be hearing from me again until Sunday morning. So, but until then, thanks again for coming by, everyone, and see you all next time. Bye for now.